Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we are previewing a game that is currently on Kickstarter called Factory Floor. This one's published by Space Duck Games and designed by Tom Hughes. It's a one to four player game, and so it has a solo mode. Mm -hmm. And it is a polyomino factory game. <laughs> yes. Uh, we used to have a segment called Filler Friday. It's been on hiatus until today. So we are going to be highlighting this game. Uh, like Monique said, it is on Kickstarter currently, so we will have a link in the description below. And so the copy of the game that we are going to be showcasing today is a prototype. So things are subject to change once the final copy has been released. And so because of that, we would like to kindly please ask that you turn on your Klingon subtitles, just in case we make any rules mistakes. We'll also be adding those corrections to the description down below. And if you enjoy content like this and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. And without further ado, we are going to get started. So if you please direct your attention to the center of the table, we are all set up here for our two-player game of Factory Floor. Yep. As you can see, we have a, a few things going on here. In the middle, we have the, the scoreboard, but it is also the round tracker because we're going to be playing this game over a period of five days, so, Monday through Friday. A business week. Weekend excluded. Yes. <laughs> we each also have our own personal factory floors in which we are going to be laying these polyomino tiles too. Yep. Right? And of course, our lineup of worker meeples. This is the labor the labor force right here. Yes. And so in this game, over the course of five days, we are going to be taking polyomino tiles from the center of the table and placing them onto our factory floor. These tiles are going to represent different types of rooms that you may see in a production building or in a factory setting, I suppose. Yep. We're going to have staff rooms, production buildings, quality control, etc. And so at the end of five days, or otherwise 10 rounds, 10 rounds yep. whoever has the most points wins. And so the way that a day works is a day is split up into three different phases. We have the AM and PM shifts in which we are going to be taking two actions each, mm -hmm. claiming tiles, hiring workers, spending workers, etc. And then we're going to end the day with this PR phase, which is the production phase where we are essentially going to be scoring points. Mm -hmm. And so players take turns in a snake-wise fashion, meaning if I am the first player, then I would take an action, Naveen would take an action, Naveen would take another action, and then back to me. Yep, exactly. And there are three main types of actions in this game. The first type of action, which is the main kind of point of the game, is you're going to be taking a tile from the center of the table. At the start of the AM and PM shift, you're going to be drawing these tiles from, from a bag, actually. And the number of tiles that you lay out on the table is dependent on player count. So it's going to be four tiles plus two per player. Yep. So in a two-player game, it's eight. Eight tiles, yep. And so we're just going to go ahead and go over the different types of rooms that you'll find on these tiles. So the first type of tile is the staff room. And the staff rooms are all this like yellowish color. When you place a staff room on your board, uh, they become populated immediately with workers. And so the maximum number of workers the, these staff rooms can each hold is two. And so when I place this on my factory floor, I'm gonna go ahead and take two workers from the supply. And they're gonna go ahead and go into my staff room. These workers are going to be used in order to spend them to move around my tiles mm -hmm. if I feel the need to over the course of the game. Workers are also moved into these production buildings, which are used to score points, as long as the production building is adjacent to the staff room. So if I had a production building just like this, and we were to go into the production phase of the round, then I would be able to move up to two of these workers into this production building that would then score us points. So you must take note, though, each building can only hold a certain amount of meeples indicated by the building itself. So in this case, Monique maxed out. Quality control buildings are these pink ones, and these buildings are important for the end of the game. For every production building that's adjacent to the quality control building, it's going to score essentially twice. Yes, at the very end of the game, at the end of Friday. Mm -hmm. The last type of building in the standard game are these storerooms, and storerooms are essentially fillers. They are those small type uh, tiles in order for you to kind of fit them in uh, into spaces where you just need filled. There's no polyomino that's smaller than two tiles. So the storerooms are the only way you can get something that's small. Mm -hmm. And the significance of that is at the very, very end of the game, you're going to score minus one point per square that you did not cover. So these are essentially a, worth two points. Two points, yeah. Yeah. Now those supplies are limited. Once they're out, they are gone. Exactly. And so those are all the different types of building tiles that you can build in the standard game. And so going back to the actions, the first type of action is just taking one of these tiles and placing them on your board. So the rules are pretty standard for mm -hmm. polyomino um, placement. You can place the tile anywhere on your board, essentially. It just cannot cross the walls. It can't overhang. It cannot overhang. And once it's placed, you can't move it unless you take an action to spend workers. So say I were to take this tile on my turn and place it here. 
Like I was mentioning earlier, these staff rooms come populated already with two workers once you place them. So I would go ahead and place my workers just like that. The next type of action that I can take when it comes back to my turn is I can spend a worker in order to either move one of the polyomino tiles that are already on my factory floor to another location on my board, or I can actually swap one of my tiles with one of the center tiles. So say I had this empty staff room on my board as well, and I decided that, hey, I actually want a different type of building. Then I can spend one of these workers in order to replace this with, say, a production building, and then go ahead and place it right there. I could also spend a worker in order to relocate one of my tiles into another, onto another spot of my player board. But if I were to move a production building that has workers in it, I have to first empty the building of its workers by moving them into an adjacent staff room, just like this or else these workers must go back to the labor pool, which is not good. You're essentially firing them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I can go ahead and move this uh, to a different location. So maybe somewhere like here, because I would still be next to both the staff room and now quality control. Yep. The third type of action that you can take on your turn is to hire more of these workers. If I have an empty staff room or even a staff room that has just one meeple on it, I can hire up to two workers per room this way. So. Staff rooms have a maximum capacity of two workers, so I could never hire more than that, mm -hmm. but I can take an, an action to just hire workers, just like that. And if you ever feel like you can't do an action or if you don't want to, you can always forfeit it mm -hmm. and pass. pass. At the end of the AM shift, then the shift marker moves to PM, and we actually put all the tiles that were not collected back into the bag, mm -hmm. and we put out a new set of eight. Yep. At this point, the first player marker also gets passed clockwise. Once the PM shift is over, then we are going to move into the production phase. And this is where we get to move our worker meeples into the production buildings so that we can score them more points. So the very first thing that happens is for each production building that you have orthogonally adjacent to a staff room, you can move workers into that building. Yep. And so in this example here, I have two production buildings next to staff rooms, which each have two workers in them. So I'm going to go ahead and move the workers into each production building. And I think you have the I same, I can do the right? exact same, yeah. So this one can move in here. This one is technically there. This one can move here. And of course, this one here. Perfect. And then you score points. You're going to score the number of points that is showing in these green circles, plus one additional point per worker meeple that is inside that production building. So in this example, this building is worth four points, plus two more points for the workers. And the same goes for here, four plus two. So this is a total of 12 points. 12 points, yep. And as long as it stays like this, it's going to earn me those number of points each round, unless I move them. Correct. And same thing for me. I have the exact same kind of configuration. I have 4 plus 2, and then 4 plus 2. So that would be also 12. Perfect. Once the production phase has been resolved, then you move the marker onto the next day, and play continues in the same fashion. After the last production phase of Friday, you're going to go into endgame scoring. At the end of the game, your player boards might look a little something like this, mm -hmm. although realistically, they'll probably be a lot more full because this is just for example purposes. Yes, we're just setting it up. So this would be at the end of Friday. Yes. And so the very first thing that you score is each player gets one point for each of their storerooms that they were able to completely encircle with tiles in the 10 squares that are surrounding it. And so in this example, I would get one point for this. And unfortunately... Uh, yeah, I was not able to close this one off nor this because of that. But the storerooms are still good because it covers up two squares, so mm -hmm. it's essentially two points each. Yep. And then you're going to score points for each of your quality control rooms. The way that you score them is for each production room that's orthogonally adjacent to the quality control room, you score that many points. Exactly. So in this example, this is going to score me three points because it's only adjacent to that. This is going to score me three plus four because it's adjacent to both of these rooms, so that's seven. Plus two more because this room has two workers on them, so that's a total of nine. And then this room, I did not put in a very um, ideal position. So it's only adjacent to this building, which is going to score four plus two, which is six. So that is a total of 15 mm -hmm. in just quality control uh, scoring. Yeah, and mine would score very similarly. And finally, players are going to be awarded bonus points for having certain types of criteria, the yep. most number of worker meeples, the largest a staff room, etc. And all of these bonuses are outlined here on the score track. So the very first thing, 
is the player with the most number of worker meeples on their board gets seven points. Sure, so that would be me in this case because I have eight to your six. Yep, exactly. And then whoever has the single largest quality control room is going to get 10 points. And what we mean by that is you can have two quality control rooms that are adjacent to form a, a larger yep. room right. uh, or more than two rooms, essentially. But in this example, I have the largest quality control room over here with two of them kind of uh, side to side. Yep. So I would get the 10 points for that. Similarly, whoever has the largest staff room also gets 10 points. And so I think that is Again, it would be also you. me because yep. I have this, this large staff room right here. And finally, whoever has the most number of production rooms on their board gets five additional points. Okay, so mine would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, I believe you are six. Yeah, I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, yep. so then Naveen would get those five, five points. points. And the last thing you have to account for in final scoring is for each square that is uncovered, it becomes minus one point. And at this point, whoever has the most points is the winner. And so that is how you play Factory Floor. As you can see, it is a fast game. It is also uh, quite light, so you can kind of get in and out of it with uh, family members, etc. But if you do want a little bit of a tighter game, there are advanced rules with another type of tiles. Yep. And so before the game begins, players can decide how many of these to use on your player board, mm -hmm. up to four of them per player. Yep. And you essentially are going to be putting these out onto your board as squares that cannot be built over. Yes. And so this creates more of a challenge in terms of how you place your polyomino tiles on your board. And that's pretty much how the advanced variant works. And so the advanced variant is nice if you want a little bit more of a challenge, mm -hmm. right? And so this game is currently on Kickstarter. We are going to include a link to the campaign down below if you'd like to check it out. You may have already seen it. It's a campaign with all the super cute artwork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and please feel free to leave us a comment down below if you have any questions about this game. And we will go ahead and try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.